all the way up here, the Sea to Sky through Whistler, Pemberton. We took the Duffy Lake Road up here to Lillooet. Down here from Riss Creek is when we detoured into the Namaya Valley. And we took this old wagon road and took us right back out of Tatla Lake, right here if we can get to it, and then finish our drive into Bellacoola. This series is brought to you by West Can Overland, Fireplace Performance. So Toyota World Runners found a little piece of luxury at uh, our buddy's family cabin <laughs> that's way out in the middle of nowhere. And <laughs> Stacy's about to catch her first fish. Yay. She's never been fishing. And I've never been fishing, everyone. How, how can, like, Don't hate me. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I should have taken her fishing. Yeah. I'm fishing. <laughs> uh, how are the fish, Darren? Uh, not very plentiful at the moment. <laughs> but, but the views! But the lake's really nice. Different. Plentiful. Yeah. The lake's nice. <laughs> This is in focus. Yeah, we're doing it again. So our road trip camping expedition turned into a cabin night. Yeah, we're glamping tonight, last night, I guess. Big shout out to Darren and his family for letting us stay here. He told me that he was going to the same area that we were exploring. I asked him where. He's like, oh, I have a family cabin on Nimpo Lake. I was like, oh, that's like right on the way to Bella Coola. Mm -hmm. He's like, you should come in, stop, you know, stop by. So, so we just rolled up yesterday, just stopped by, no expectations. I thought I was just gonna, you know. Say hi, you know, say, yeah. say that we made it. <laughs> and uh, his family is so welcoming. They invited us for dinner, fresh trout from the lake, cooked to perfection mm -hmm. with veggies. And, and then they offered us this little cabin <laughs> right on the lake. We'll show you in a sec. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. The hospitality this family has shown is amazing. <laughs> yeah, and a great little, just a little mini luxury reset. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. I mean, the tent has been phenomenal so far. Yeah, that um, rooftop tent setup is pretty clutch. It's yeah. so easy. I love having the bedding like already in there. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of perks that we will go over with our setup right now. But it is nice to kind of mm -hmm. sleep in a bed and the roof and yeah. not hear the wind. <laughs> Yeah, at the end of the trip, we're going to do like a full review on that setup because, uh, yeah, I think you guys would probably be interested. Mm -hmm. So yesterday we drove a uh, 92-kilometer old wagon road, which was badass. Mm -hmm. Like, you guys just saw that. So, like, man, that was a lot of fun. It was about 42, I think 42 or 45 kilometers of just, like, old bumpy wagon trails through, like, beautiful glacial lakes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really incredible. It was, yeah, it shaved a lot of kilometers of highway for us, too. Totally. And we know, I mean, the Yeti would rather be on those dirt roads. So Absolutely. It was really nice. Yeah, and I felt like Clay Croft. <laughs> yeah. Like exploring, opening yeah. new roads. Yeah. So, yeah, like, we started our trip right here. Did I get it? Kind of. Nope. Nope, that's Kelowna. Yep. <laughs> We're over here. I'm gonna show you this map. We started down here, Vancouver Island, and we have driven all the way around, all the way up to like, oh, there's Nimpo Lake right there. Yeah, it's insane. With a detour, so hopefully this is in focus. If not, I'll zoom it in for you. So we drove from Squamish. We drove all the way up here, the Sea to Sky, through Whistler, Pemberton. We took the Duffy Lake Road up here to Lillooet, and then we did our detour to Carpenter Lake, and then we came all the way up here through Clinton, straight up through Hundred Mile House to Williams Lake, and then down here from Risk Creek is when we detoured into the Namaya Valley 
following this old dirt road, which was incredible, uh, to the Chilco Lake. So we would have had to go all the way back here, which is about 150 kilometers. And instead we took this old wagon road, which kind of winded, meandered up through these lakes and took us right back out at Tatla Lake. And from there we drove to Nimpo Lake. And then we're gonna check out hopefully a rainbow range right here if we can get to it and then finish our drive into Bella Coola. I love maps. <laughs> I mean, the Eddie's killing it so far. We're overly impressed, but we do know that he would better, rather be on the dirt. <laughs> you better knock on some wood, throw some salt over your shoulder. <laughs> he's, he's great. So far, so good. So far, so great. So yeah, guys, thanks so much for coming on this journey with us. It's mm. been our biggest one yet. Um, we're learning a lot about this province um, and mm. yeah, we're really excited to kind of dive into some history we honestly didn't know anything about. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. It's really freaking cool. And we're not finished yet. No. Like this is only episode two, so we've got, <laughs> we've got a lot more to show you and it's only going to get better. Yeah. Today, we're going to go find some Rainbow Mountains and drive the Freedom Highway to Bella Coola. The Freedom Highway. So stay tuned for that. mountains we wanted to explore were inaccessible due to snow so our next task was conquering what residents call the freedom road this remote and gnarly section of highway is the only road connecting bella coola to the rest of the world this extremely narrow steep and dangerous highway was completed in 1953 with very little help from the provincial government a single bulldozer from bella coola and later one from tatla lake carved their way through the bedrock, creating a trail that was only surveyed by eye. This courageous and incredible undertaking truly became a symbol of freedom for the people of Bella Coola. Letting the brakes cool down on the Yeti, it was time to find a lunch spot. This little dirt road looked like it was going to have the perfect spot. It was incredible seeing the change in climates as we descended back into the valley and the coast. Going from pines and aspens to giant cedars and Douglas firs definitely had us feeling at home. The stunning diversity of wildlife, landscapes, and ancient forests in this part of the world truly make it a treasure and one that we must protect.
Stacy has been to Bella Coola via helicopter for work, but having never been there by road, we were pretty excited to see what it had to offer. If you're enjoying this series, please consider smashing that like button and subscribe if you aren't already. It really does help the channel out so we can keep making videos like this. After a few failed attempts of finding a good camp spot for the night, we stumbled across this tiny overgrown trail. It looked like a quad trail used infrequently by locals, and it doesn't look like a truck has ever been down here. But thankfully the Yeti is used to tight bush island trails, so this was definitely something we were going to enjoy.
friends. Guess where we are. We made it. The Yeti took us to Bella Coola. We're so far away from home. <laughs> I think we've done almost 1,200 kilometers, 1,100, something like that. Yeah. Insanity. And a cool part is that a good third of that has been on dirt roads. Yeah. Yeah, it's really nice. We haven't had long, very long stretches of highway, which is awesome. As soon as we see a lot of highway, we find a detour. Yeah, and it's cool because this whole area is full of off-road detours through ranches and farmland and old wagon trails. Super cool. And we found this unreal river spot. Yeah, it's pretty, yeah, it's awesome. We had a couple tri trial and errors. Yeah, this is about the third or fourth spot that we tried, but you just got to keep trying those random little roads and you will find your spot. That's literally how we stumbled upon this. Yeah. And of course, we got here and stopped at the local liquor store and of course... Grabbed their finest. <laughs> We're gonna tonight, review it! Tonight we have Breakside Brewing India Pale Ale. These guys are from Portland. IPA. If you didn't know. IPA, yep. These guys are from Portland, Oregon. It says it's employee owned, which is kind of cool. And what really sold us is that it says it tastes like vinyl sounds. So if you're an old school music nerd. Yeah, it's not like a vodka soda that tastes like Channel 3. <laughs> this is this is gonna taste like vinyl. Strong beer, 6.4%, and a sweet eagle graphic. And the, you know, classic 6.4%. I don't think we've actually bought a beer less than six percent lately <laughs> honestly for pain like five bucks a beer better be six percent <laughs> they don't actually have a write-up on this beer so we're just gonna send it tastes like vinyl sounds uh, tastes like vinyl sounds cheers well, cheers mama. Nice. Oh, it smells like, it smells like a classic ipa i'm looking forward to something a little less crisp so let's see Whoa. Interesting. Whoa. Well, it's not crisp. It's definitely not citrusy. It also doesn't really taste like a normal IPA. What is that? It's not sweet. So if you don't like the sweetness that a lot of breweries are putting into their IPAs these days, it's pretty, like, bitter. It is, that is it, yeah. It's, it's For, pretty bitter. I feel like we're so used to like hazy IPAs. And fruity. And like fruity. Citrus IPAs and mm -hmm. everyone just kind of throws a bunch of flavors into IPAs. This is kind of a classic. So I, I'd, I'd visit this brewery for sure. Yeah. So Portland, Oregon, Breakside. We'll see you soon. Yeah. We might see you on our way. Isn't it amazing how many different flavors you can get out of water, barley, hops, and yeast? Yeah. It's incredible. And tomorrow we're taking a high clearance 4x4 trail up another mountain to go find an epic view. Yeah, the Yeti's going to do a lot of climbing. <laughs> he loves climbing. It's going to be on dirt climbing. road, so I, I mean, that's his favorite. Yeah, it's pretty incredible to be here. It's pretty incredible to see a bunch of green again. Oh my god, I was getting really sick of seeing pines. It's amazing watching the microclimates change from fur to pine mm -hmm. to back to like the deciduous trees mm -hmm. yeah after a peaceful night by the fire and listening to the quiet river sounds we were up early and ready to conquer this mountain This steep dirt road was going to climb the same amount of elevation as the Freedom Hill, except on a far less maintained dirt road. This route takes you to the top of the mountains that frame the Bella Coola Inlet. 
and boasts some incredible views. But not seeing any tracks on the road had us feeling a bit apprehensive that we were the first ones to take this route this year. And having such a late spring and glacial runoff, it was likely we were going to encounter some significant obstacles. It was definitely disappointing not being able to summit this mountain and see what's on the other side. But that's just the way the story goes sometimes when you're exploring the unknown. So we kept our heads up and headed to our next destination. the types of places that are not on your maps and you have to find by yourself. <laughs> we conquered what we had set out to do. We drove an almost 40 year old pickup truck all the way to Bellagula. We visited Choco Lake and drove the Freedom Road in both directions. You might say this adventure is complete, but we still had to drive home and we were not taking the same route as we did coming in. We thought this was gonna be a three part series, but we've still got over a thousand kilometers to drive. So you're gonna to wanna to join us next time to find out how this trip ends and how everything plays out. 
There's one significant disaster in the next episode that we're actually still working on how to overcome. So stay tuned and thank you for being here. Park there.